is the Chris Vector practical or just tactical? That's what we're going to talk about today. Of course, you're looking at the box for the Chris Vector, which it does come with a hard case. Let's get that out of the way and reveal the star of the show, the Chris Vector SDP Enhanced. tell you everything that I know about this gun, pros and cons, take you to the range with me, show you how it did out there, and a little bit of comparison, and again at the end of the video tell you if this thing is only tactical or is this a practical choice for home defense and maybe some other options as well. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So I put a Chris two-point sling on here and then one of their magazines as well. Uh, I actually got this because they had like a, you know, get a hundred dollar store credit, you know, if you buy one within a certain period of time, whatever that was, but it was super quick actually getting the store credit and stuff. So I was like, Hey, screw it. I'll get a sling and grab an extra magazine. And then I bought two additional magazines with it. Let's talk about some of the specs here. 5.9 pounds is what Chris claims on the website. Keep that number in the back of your head. Cause I'm actually going to weigh it with the sling with the Holosun and an empty magazine, and we'll see where we're at currently with this pistol. You have a 6.5 inch barrel and 16 and three quarter inches in overall length without the brace. Let's start up here and talk about what makes the Vector the Vector and what makes it so unique. So here is the enhanced part of the SDP. As you can see, it has kind of like a built-in hand stop Picatinny rail up here, Picatinny rail on the side, M-lock slot up here. You can see that's where I put one of my attachments for my sling. M-lock, M-lock, Picatinny rail, threaded barrel. I kind of wish that this area right in here was smooth with no Picatinny rail. I think that would just be a little bit more comfortable for your hand in there. But you have this entire area right here to kind of fit your hand. What we noticed is at the range though, is if you have your hands somewhere in here and you're not careful, the bolt catch will actually kind of be in this position once it's empty and it can pinch you and it's just kind of a little bit uncomfortable. So somewhere right in here actually made the gun a little bit more controllable and a little bit more comfortable to shoot, just not as ergonomic to hold on to because of that Picatinny rail. And you kind of have to be careful, although they have this guard around the magazine release you just want to be mindful of that when you have your hand up in this area. Came with the flip up sights straight from Chris, Picatinny rail on the top, lays down parallel with the gun. I wouldn't say really flush, but it has that little extension there. So you can pull that back and it only travels a short distance there. So it takes quite a bit of pressure to get that thing to the rear bolt catch slash release right here magazine release of course and at the heart of the system and what makes this not only a unique operating gun but a unique looking gun is the super v recoil system so most guns they're going to use like a linear style uh, action meaning the the bolt is just going to come straight back to the rear it's going to be felt in the shooter's hand all that kind of stuff well chris has a multi-link system so it comes back a little bit and then it drops down. So there's a spring in here and that whole system just kind of moves back and then down. And then that allows the recoil reduction that you'll see from a 45 ACP. It's got a good amount of weight to it. And that recoil reduction system makes a soft shooting gun. Yeah, that thing, that thing does pop up and get you for sure. Try to hold it more like that.
slapping the sh Hey, you see it? <laughs> oh, you got it tangled. <laughs> First time that's ever happened. I love it. That thing is awesome, dude. Man, that's nice, dude. Coming back, you have your ambidextrous safety right there. Of course, your trigger, grip, opening in here. Kind of kind of similar to like the X95 in a way. Not as exaggerated and obviously not as open as the X95, but big enough of an opening so you could get a gloved hand and a gloved finger in here. I decided to put the Holosyn HE510C on here this is the green dot, and I was originally going to use this on my SP5, but the rail that I bought for the SP5, it's just not big enough to accommodate this, so I just kind of held on to it. I think I've used it on a couple of other guns for reviews, but it's dedicated to the Chris Vector now. Then you do have a little storage compartment in here. If you want to put a spare battery for your optic or whatever the case may be, you can definitely put that in there. And then I wanted to run a kind of cool brace setup. So this is an A3 tactical brace. It's got the offset rear section here. And then I actually kind of forced this QD mount in here for my sling back here in this M-lock slot that's built into the brace. And then it's got somewhat of a cheek rest. I mean, this it it's uncomfortable like a traditional brace, <laughs> but it fits the aesthetics of the gun and that's mainly what I was going for. I mean, there's not a single brace that I've used that is like comfortable to shoot off of anyways, but here's your actual attachment for your brace right here. And then it does actually have, looks like M lock slots here, which with this on there, which it has to be on there. Um, I don't know how you would actually use that, but maybe there's, maybe there's a way, I don't know. It is side folding as well. Push the button in right there and then it closes like that, and it does lock into place. Rear sight right there. By the way, it's kind of hard because the gun is like this Stormtrooper white, but here's your ejection port, bolt, and all that good stuff. Now I'll tell you, this gun looks good on the table, but it looks even better when we have ammo and we're at the range. Let's head out there for a minute. Ah, screw it. So this gun was already turning heads at the range. It is by far one of the coolest guns that I own, for sure. As far as your breakdown, it's really simple. You have three pins. We're gonna push those through. And that's gonna separate the body from the action. They're not captive. Boom, just like that. 
just that easy, it's broken down. Took this apart so I can show you a couple of things and how unique this is, because this is the heart of the system. This is what makes the Chris so unique. So you see the bolt comes back, and then you have this multi-link setup back here where this spring compresses downwards. So really cool and unique type of system there. And then of course the upper half, there is no weight on this thing at all. You can see how the hammer actually swings down as opposed to a traditional gun where the hammer would swing up like this. This one actually swings down. Check this out. I'm gonna put some pressure on this but you see how that works. Pretty neat, right? So the whole system is just wildly different than most guns that we see on the market. And that's their claim to fame really is that super V system as they call it and that multi-link design. And there's one issue with buying a white gun. This is the only white gun that I own and uh, I'm not gonna say I'm regretting it, but man, it gets dirty super quick. And that's something I was expecting. Let me drop the ISO here so you can see even better <laughs> just how dirty this thing got just from me taking it apart. And I haven't cleaned it or anything. So, you know, it kind of makes sense. But yeah, having a white gun, it's kind of like having white car seats. It's gonna get dirty real quick. Now here's a very interesting aspect to this gun. So I'm gonna get this thing on the scale. Remember now, Chris says five pounds, nine ounces. And of course that's without a sling, that's without an optic, with an empty mag, I would suspect, but with the brace on there, the sling, an empty mag, and the Holosun, we're at eight pounds, eight ounces. This is a heavy freaking pistol, dude. Got two guns for comparison, the Copperhead, five pounds, four ounces. And it does not have a sling on it, to be fair. It's got a magazine in here, but no sling. And of course it has the Romeo on there. I don't know what the heck I do with the magazine for this gun. It's probably in my range bag, honestly. But this one naked, nothing on it. No optic, no freaking sling is six pounds. So this one's got some weight too. If we had an empty, in there will probably, you could probably add another six to eight ounces somewhere in there. Now if we really wanna spice this thing up, which I do, and by the way, this has the Freedom RDS Leupold, one times magnification uh, red dot on there. We have the Victor's Blue Force Gear tactical sling and an empty magazine with the forward vertical grip, that's one of the short grips by the way, eight pounds, two ounces. I just wanted to recenter and make sure I had the whole gun sling and everything on there and it's all on there. And eight pounds, two ounces. So the Vector is literally heavier than my freaking AR, which is carbine length, 16 inch barrel, all that kind of stuff. Pretty crazy. Now that's not to say that there's no place for the Vector and because it is a little bit heavier, Again, coupled with that recoil reduction system, you get a soft shooting gun, but the thing is heavy. And when you introduce a new type of system with new components, it's just inevitable. Unless you are able to lighten up the weight a lot somewhere else, you're gonna get a heavier gun in return. Let's talk about the pros and cons of the Chris Vector and see if this thing is just tactical or actually practical. First of all, <laughs> the aesthetics. This thing is cool as hell, man. I, you know, if you don't like the way this gun looks, I question your judgment and I'm being serious. I question your judgment if you don't like the way this gun looks. I think it's incredible. When it comes down to what this is though and the things that really matter, Let's talk about that. The operation of the gun, I think is very intuitive. So I have my magazine release here, right? Would I rather it be like right here or something? It doesn't have to be because my hand is right there. So I'm able to release that mag super quickly, get it out of the gun, get a fresh mag in there. My bolt release 
is right here, not a problem. I like side charging handles anyways. So the fact that everything you need, besides the trigger of course, and the safety is right here, very cool. I also appreciate what they did up here in adding this extra little hand guard piece, if you will, and it doesn't add, from what I've seen, any more weight than the regular SDP. I think they were both listed at five pounds, nine ounces. And so the addition of the M-Lock and of course the Picatinny rail gives you some more options that you can add stuff up there if you want to. I like the fact that it came with flip up sights at this price. Um, I think it probably should, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, these things are kind of expensive, uh, but it is what it is, man. At least it came with a set of backup sights, so I do appreciate that. And the ergonomics of the gun, the way it shoots, soft shooting, just a really enjoyable gun to shoot. It was super reliable, which is what I would expect for this type of gun. That's gonna lead us directly into the cons, some of which are exclusive to the Vector, others are just PCC cons in general, but the first con is the weight. So you're talking almost eight and a half pounds for a 45. Now that weight makes this very controllable, again, coupled with that Super V system. So it's awesome there, but you're talking about eight and a half pounds for a gun that is as limited as this is. Now, 45 is a great suppressor host, fantastic home defense guns. I love PCCs for home defense. I think they're one of the better options. You can put this in somebody's hands that may be timid with a traditional pistol and allow them to protect themselves. Fantastic. But you're not gonna be taking down deer or bear or anything like that. Even with a 10 mil, who's gonna, who's gonna walk in bear country with a, with a crisp vector chambered in 10 millimeter? Um, I, I, I'm not saying I'm opposed to it. I just don't see many people doing it. I see at that point, they're like, man, I'm gonna take a rifle, dude. Or I'm gonna have my sidearm chambered in a known bear defending round and then have my rifle as well. I, you know what I mean? So that's kind of where I'm at with it. And that's why I think this thing has serious limitations. And that's generally a trait of most PCCs. Also, the price. So for a few hundred more dollars or even the same price, you can get X95. Two ARs. MPX Copperhead, not an SP5. You know, these things go up to freaking three grand, you know? So it, it's, it's kind of in that middle of the road spot. And I guess you just have to make a decision like, do I need a rifle or do I want a PCC? A rifle is going to give you more options and more versatility than a PCC will, even in 45 or 10 mil, but one of the best home defense guns that I can think of that anybody in your household can actually use. So I am a, I am a huge fan of PCCs, not only for their practicality inside of a home, but they're one of the most enjoyable guns to shoot. But I also understand there's limitations there. And when you're talking about that kind of money, man, that's just something you're going to have to decide for yourself. Now, this is obviously an MPX Copperhead and nine, but if you go up to, I think it's the cane break, which is in 300 blackout, now we're talking about a whole different story. Now we're not talking about PCCs, right? So pistol caliber carbines, more limited. When you have AR pistols and, and you know, chambering in 300 blackout, now you're talking about a gun that has the versatility in the size and in the caliber. So that might be a better option for you as well. And you're not talking about that much more money for a cane break versus the Chris Vector. I'm not trying to tell you which way to go. I'm just giving you some extra things to think about to see if that thing makes sense to you. And I think that's because of the price. Once you start getting up in prices like the Copperhead for a nine millimeter pistol, there may be better options for you. So the issue I had originally with the mags, once I put them together, is my son wanted to see this gun as soon as I got it, because it's a Call of Duty gun, right? So he accidentally dropped the magazine on the hardwood floor, and that's when the whole thing came apart. 
And so I tried to duplicate that issue on concrete. I dropped it on the ground at the range. No issues with either one of those. But when I dropped it on hardwood again, after maybe two or three times, once it fell flat like this, again, the whole thing came apart. So my, my theory is, is that the tabs on the bottom of the mag are not secure enough to hold it in place. At first I was thinking maybe I just didn't secure it in place enough, but there's no other way to do it. This thing is under so much spring tension, you have to get those tabs in place for this thing to stay together. So I just, I really honestly believe those tabs are so flush fitting to this extension piece. How could they hold it together? You know, if you drop it on the wrong side, now this one actually sticks out just a little bit more. It's, it's really, I don't know. I think it's just kind of a poor design in that aspect of it. It's a great idea, just poorly executed as far as these locking tabs. With all that said, this thing is freaking awesome. It is badass, dude, and I am so happy to finally have one. And I think something that's often neglected but is super important for gun rights, self-defense, the Second Amendment in general is video games. And this is a video game gun. And I was going to originally name this video, Call of Duty Made Me Buy This Gun. Hell, I may even still name it that. I don't know yet. But video games and even Hollywood, who denounces guns all the time, brings so many people into guns because they're like, man, you know, I and, and my son's the same way, dude. He plays with this gun or whatever gun in Call of Duty, and then he sees that, you know, dad got one, and he's like, wow, that's really cool. So I think a lot of people will see this. It's easily recognizable in video games, even though they, they call it in the new war zone like the Fennec or something. <laughs> But then again, they call the SCAR the TAC-56. It's like the entire rest of the world knows it as a SCAR and they call it something different. I digress. But video game guns like this one and some of the others that we've done on the channel are super important because not only are they practical, they are tactical. And that is never a bad thing when it's bringing people in to this passion, love, and honestly, this important right that we all hold so dear. So it doesn't matter what brings them in, if it brings them in and they're in it for the right reasons, the Chris Vector is one of those guns that can really grab people's attention in a good way. And I'm, I love this thing. Absolutely love this thing. The only thing it's missing is a suppressor. And this is the year where I finally buy my first suppressor. I've been saying it, saying it, saying it. 2023 is the year. So I'd love to hear what your opinion of the Chris Vector is, man. And also, has there ever been a time where you bought a gun based on a video game, on a movie, whatever? No shame here, man. That I think that's a really cool thing to, to have something that is so cool to you that you see in a movie and you're like, I gotta have that. So regardless, man, the Chris Vector, if I were to give it a grade, I'd be somewhere around like an eight, eight and a half. And the only reason I say that because the limitations that the PCC itself just inherently has. But as far as in the PCC world, I'd probably give it a higher grade than that. This thing is freaking really awesome, man. Thank you guys for joining. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.